The next motion in the sword manual is reverse swords. Now this is one of the times when it is acceptable, in fact it's almost mandatory, that you throw the right arm or the throw the uh, right elbow or move it away from your body and I'll demonstrate. The reverse swords is two motions. One, the sword falls down similar in, in motion to the way you did order swords, but you don't let the point come as near the floor. Again, the, the hand is grasping the sword with the edge down. At this point, you have to throw the right elbow out and roll the sword up so that you're coming back into a pencil grip. I'll do this from the side so that you can see what the angle should be. This hand, the right hand, should be just about at shoulder level which will place the sword at about a 45 degree angle to the horizontal. Many Sir Knights get twisted around and want to hold the sword with that way. That's not correct. There's another popular mistake which is made and that's to hold the sword with the last three fingers extended. That also is not correct. The fingers are curled into the fist in this manner. When you come out of it, it's carry swords. You come back to this position and up in a second motion. Let's do that a couple of times, one from the front and one from the side so that you can see the cadence. Reverse, swords, one, two. Carry, swords, one, two. Let's do it from the side. Reverse, swords, one, two, carry, swords, one, two. If you don't throw the elbow out, you will hit yourself. You will get in conflict with the sword, so to speak, and you will tend to have some problems. There is a hint that I'll give you at this point, should have given you in the beginning of the tape, but handling the sword in a uniform, part of the uniform officially is a pair of gloves. We found out years ago that cotton gloves and these slick sword grips do not mix at all. A very helpful hint to you is go to leather gloves. Soft deerskin gloves will give you a much better grip on the sword than slick cotton or nylon gloves. You're penalizing yourselves and you're causing a lot, a lot of stress on your Sir Knights if you're using cotton gloves. You really need to use a leather glove, a good soft, tacky leather glove. Reverse swords is a good example of how that can happen, as well as some of the other motions. One of the things that's kind of been helpful to me on reverse swords is when you come down to this position, you're grasping the sword with the first three fingers. When you, or, or the last three fingers, excuse me, when you go to the second motion, you switch to the first three fingers and roll the sword up. When you come out of it, you do the reverse. You're starting with the first three fingers in the pencil grip up here. When you throw the elbow out and, and drop it down to this point here, you go back to gripping the sword with the last three fingers, and you could actually let your first finger and your, and your thumb run fly free. You don't really want to do that because you might lose control. But then as you flip the sword up to the shoulder and the carry, you go back to the pencil grip. The next motion or movement in the, in the sword manual is invert sword. Now this is another movement that some Sir Knights have a great deal of trouble with because simply have not read the book. If you'll read the book, this one is in, in two motions. A lot of things happen at the same time. At the command invert swords, the tip of the sword, the point of the sword wants to come about six to eight inches out from, a, from away from your shoulder. The left hand comes out and you roll it so that the palm is away from your body. You reach down about nine inches from, from the end of the, uh, the guard, from the bottom of the guard. And that's actually, you've got to reach for that. It's about nine inches. Then you release the right hand and roll the sword up in front of the face and reach up and grasp the, the blade below the left hand with the right hand. And I, I emphasize below because some Sir Knights will actually get the right hand on top. 
because they don't grasp the sword blade far enough down toward the hilt. The right hand should be, again, with the elbow next to the body, thou place the right hand at just about belt level. The hilt, or the guard, should be just about at a level with your chin if you have picked the sword up about nine inches from the hilt, and I actually got a couple of inches too close that time to emphasize uh, the problem that some Sir Knights have. When you return or carry the sword or come to carry swords, you drop the right hand by the side. You don't hold it up here to grab the sword. You drop the right hand to the side. You roll the sword back over and place the grip in the fingers of the right hand. That's the first motion. The second motion is to push the sword back into position against the shoulder near the armpit and then drop the left hand to the side. Let's do the invert and the carry in cadence so that you can see how it should look. Invert, swords. One, two. Carry, swords. One, two, three. One of the last moves, or two more moves in the sword manual for a competition this year, is guide, swords. Guide is very similar to present. It's almost the same movement, but it is not quite. When you bring the sword up to this position, you also bring the left hand up to cover the right, the thumbs on the back of the grip, and the sword this time is completely perpendicular, or vertical, plumb, so to speak. I'll turn sideways, and hopefully it is straight up and down. It's not like this at a present. The hands are covering. Again, the elbows are comfortably by the side. The grip is at about chin level, but it's got to be a little further out now because you're making the sword stand up in the vertical position. Back to this position, when you come to a carry, it's all done in one motion. You drop both hands by the side, you're back to the pencil grip, and you're in business for the next movement. The last movement of the drill is parade rest. There are several things which all have to happen in one motion. This is a one movement, uh, or one count movement. At the command parade, rest, the sword just falls down. If you'll just let it fall down, hold it, keeping your hand steady near your side, and this time, let the front of the blade show forward with the blade tip between your toes. At the same time, the left hand comes up and covers the right, and the right foot goes back about six inches. This is a rest position, as it says, parade rest. You can bend your knees and, and be in a more relaxed position. At the command, commandery, attain, hut, everything comes back to this position, and now is where some people get the, the order swords and the parade rest mixed up, because now if you'll notice, the grip is now back at the right seam of my right trousers leg. It's not out here, it's, it's rotated back around with my thumbs against the seams of my pants legs. And then the captain will give carry swords and you flip the sword back up to the carry position in one motion. Let me do that again in cadence. Parade, rest, one motion. Commandery, tang, hut, together. With the sword and the thumbs on the seams of the trousers, carry swords and up. There are several other movements, some of which will be done by the class D teams, which are asylum movements, specific asylum movements, which we probably ought to cover. One which we do very often is on guard. When you do on guard, you rotate the left foot to the left, the right foot comes out, and the sword comes to this position. It doesn't come out here, but it doesn't come back up here either. It comes comfortably out with the sword at about a 45 degree angle from the body and a 45 degree angle to the horizontal. This is a guard position with, with the, uh, excuse me, the edge out. Now, when you give the cuts, there are four cuts, or parries as they are called. Parry one comes from the guard position. You come up with the sword with the palm rolled away from you so that you can see the emblem 
as far out as you can reach with the right arm at about a 45, 45 as we said earlier when you're doing the draw. That's one. Two is you rotate the sword around with the palm facing to your left. That's the second cut or parry two. Parry three is to roll the sword over again this direction with the palm facing to your right. And parry four is to be back up to the first position of parry one. And then you come back carry, you come back to the guard position, and the command is sword, you come back to a carry. Try to do that again. On guard, give cuts. One, two, three, four. Carry, sword. Okay? The uh, Charge swords is done in one motion. Uh, there's only one thing you have to remember about charge swords is that you want the palm facing up. At the command charge swords, again the left foot rotates to the left, the right foot comes out, and the sword comes straight forward, level, as you, as, not up here, but at a, a comfortable level position with your palm facing up and then you get carry, swords, it all comes back in one motion. The uh, arts of steel, which is given uh, for the candidate coming through the lines or for the grand commander or grand, past grand commanders, dignitaries, is given in two motions. It's form arts of steel, cross, swords. At the command swords, not cross, <laughs> popular old misconception, but at the command swords, you come to a present with the right foot out. Excuse me. You come to the present, and then you put the right foot out and come to the first cut, or carry one. When you come back to a carry, it's carry swords. You bring the sword back to this position, the foot, the feet back together, and then the sword down to the side. Let's do that one more time. More marks of steel, cross, swords. One, two, carry, swords. One, two. This completes the sword manual, and I hope you get something out of this videotape and we'll be able to make much better scores. We expect to see all of you in Abilene and everybody make a perfect score on the sword manual. Thank you.